You've got questions. We've got answers. We have the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of That's the Hammer. It's good to be with you, Bob. Notice I've got an antique with me this time. Hey, um, don't talk about me like that. <laughs> you know, uh, there was a, well, we'll talk about the Super Bowl in a second because I have a question related to it. And it goes like this. Mm-hmm. I lost money betting on the Super Bowl. Can I deduct that as a gambling loss? Well, the answer is probably not. Uh, now, there are two possibilities there where you might be able to, to actually deduct it. The first is you are a professional gambler. You are Ace, Ace Rothstein, right? Like from, from the great movie uh, Casino. That, that's you and you are a professional gambler. If that's the case, well, that's just part of business. So you win some, you lose some, right? Now, most individuals will not qualify as a quote unquote professional gambler. That is a, a tough bar uh, to get over and hard to prove to the IRS. That's really got to be your job. Simply not having another job and gambling every now and then does not make you a professional gambler. Now, beyond that, though, uh, some individuals, right, gambling winnings are income to an individual when, when you have it. So you are allowed to offset that gambling winnings with your gambling losses. So the other group here that may benefit from that loss is if you win, uh, you've won something already this year or you win later in this year, tax year 2022, then you can offset either those previous 22 winnings or those future earnings that you have this year with the current loss from your Super Bowl loss. Better though, to make a better choice next year. Always better to win and pay tax than lose and pay no tax. Well, I have to think that with the emergence of FanDuel and DraftKings and so many states making gambling legal, uh, this is going to be more of an issue for many more folks. Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly something that we're seeing the rise of uh, sports betting in particular. More and more states are bringing that on, seeing this as a source uh, for state taxation as well. So to try and close some of those budget gaps that many states have. So I would expect to continue to see more states to do that. Uh, I also think that over time, we'll probably see more states bring on uh, other forms of gambling online, such as, uh, for instance, uh, poker. You know, poker was widespread back in the uh, the early 2000s. Then it kind of got shut down as the federal government put the clamps on um, poker is an interesting one is an interesting game, though, relative to other sort of casino games and that there is an argument to be made that it's skill based and, and not, you know, random luck. Uh, and because of that, it can be treated a little bit different for some other sorts of gambling. So we'll see. Uh, but yes, I certainly think that we're going to continue to see as online, uh, you know, as the Internet age continues to, to bloom and blossom, we'll see more things go online, making it easier for people to access these sorts of things. And means more people with more gambling income also means more people with gambling losses. Yeah. Probably more people with gambling losses than gambling winnings. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of uh, uh, questions and things to be answered, uh, what? how can people reach us? Yeah. Well, listen, uh, I don't know what the over under is on expected questions this week, but I certainly hope to hit the over. We love questions. So send Bob and I a note, reach out to us by emailing us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your questions here real soon.